Okay, this video is brought to you by Boolean.org. Be sure you guys go check out the website because they have so many interesting map questions that you guys will like. I really like Boolean.org because they focus on problem solving and their questions are really creative and challenging. You guys will like them too. Anyway, let me demonstrate this right here for you guys first. And then at the end of the video, I will tell you guys more about Boolean.org. So, we saw this last time. This is the triple angle identity for sine, right? In another word, sine of 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 times sine theta to the third power, like that. And then from here, we plug in 10 degrees into theta, and then we got this. And the interesting part is that we come up with sine of 30 degrees, which we know that's equal to 1 half. And then we say, let x equal to sine of 10 degrees, and then we come up with this equation. 3x, and x is the sine of 10 degrees, right? And then minus 4x to the third power, and that's equal to 1 half. And then let's just multiply everything by 2. Let's put this down first and then move this to the other side. So we got this equation. And then let's divide everything by negative 8. So we end up with x to the third power minus 3 over 4x plus 1 over 8, and that's equal to 0. Even though, though, we didn't know what exactly is sine of 10 degrees in terms of this value, but we do know sine of 10 degrees is a solution to this cubic equation because we make it to be the case, right? We let x to be sine of 10 degrees, and then we come up with this equation. So this right here must be a solution to that. However, now, this is the cubic equation. This is only one of the solutions. Where are the other two, right? So that's the interesting part. Let's try to figure out. And we know for all the cubic equations, they all have to have at least one real answer. This is definitely real, but for the other two, we don't know if it's going to be complex or they are still real. We don't know yet. Hmm, let's see. Here's the connection. In order for us to end up with this nice equation, this right here was equal to 1 half, right? And is it possible for us to come with a different angle so that sine of that angle, that would be 1 half on this side? If so, then, you know, we can come with different answers, right? Okay, now, we know sum of 30 degrees is going to be 1 half. Let's go from here. Let's see if we can come with different angles that will also give us 1 half. So let's bring up our unit circle like this. And we know sine is the y value on the unit circle. So for sum of 30 degrees, let me just draw it like this right here. This is 30 degrees degrees. And yes, I'm using degrees, okay? Okay, the y value here is 1 half. That's why sum of 30 degrees is 1 half. But if we just do a nice reflection from right to the left, if we just go to the other side like this, this point here also has the y value 1 half, right? So that's a, just a nice reflection. And now I'll just have to figure out what's the angle from here to here. Well, this was 30, this has to be 30. From here to here, it's just 180 minus 30, so it has to be 150 degrees. In another word, we know that sine of 150 degrees, this right here is equal to 1 half as well. And now, from here, if I can have sine of 150 degrees, I can come up with 1 half. But what should I let my theta to be? Well, this is the triple angle identity. I want triple of an angle to be 150, so I just have to divide 150 by 3. In another word, I want theta to be just 50 degrees, right? So let me just write this down for you guys right here. If we let theta to be 50 degrees, then we know that this will still hold true, right? I can plug in 50 degrees here, 50 de degrees here. I still have 3, and let me just use x. But this time, the x is going to be sine 50, okay? So let me just put this down right here, where x is equal to sine of 50 degrees. I will still have 3x minus 4x to the third power. And on the right-hand side, though, we will have sine of 150 degrees. In other words, that's still 1 half. So in fact, x equals to sine of 50 degrees. It's also a solution to this equation because you know this right here is the same as that, right? That's really good. And also, let's point this out. 
Sine of 10 degrees is different than sine of 50 degrees because sine is an increasing function from 0 to 90 degrees, right? The y value is increasing, so this and that, they are different. And congratulations, we just got the second answer. And now, because two of the solutions to this cubic equation, they are real, the third one must be real as well. Let's see how we can get the third one. Well, let's use a blue pen right here. And let's see. Hmm. I want to come up with another angle so that I can get one half. If that's the case, then I will pretty much find the other one, right? And now, this time, instead of going from here to here, to end up with this terminal side, let's go the opposite way from here all the way to here clockwise so we will have a negative angle right so we know from here to here it's negative 180 and from here to here is 30 degrees more so altogether this is negative 210 degrees in another word i can also tell you sine of negative 210 degrees it's equal to one half as well because they have the terminal side right the same one okay now from here i will just tell you guys the following do the same thing. I can just divide this by 3. So I would like to say that theta to be negative 70 degrees, okay? And then x, in this case, I will be looking at this as sine of negative 70 degrees. It's going to be the same thing when you're plugging negative 70 degrees into the original cubic identity, right? I mean, the triple angle identity. Triple angle identity, right? So we pretty much get the same thing, so let me just write this down, I'll put it in blue. 3x minus 4x to the third power. This time we get sine of negative 210 degrees, and this is one half as well. So here is the third solution. And by the way, yes, sine of negative 210 degrees is right here, that's positive one half. But I'm saying sine of negative 70 degrees is x. And negative 70 degrees is only down here, right? The y value is negative. So because this is negative and both of them are positive right here, you know this is different than the other two. So we got the third solution right here. And let me just summarize this for you guys real quick. Here is the deal. We know that the solutions and they are all real, okay? The solutions to the cubic equation, let's look at this form right here. x to the third power minus 3 over 4x plus 1 over 8 is equal to 0. R, the first one is sine of 10 degrees. And the second one is sine of 50 degrees. And the third one is sine of negative 70 degrees, okay? So this right here is the cool part. You see, this cubic equation is <laughs> algebraic. And if you would like, you can look at this version instead, because now you can say this cubic equation has integer coefficients. But anyway, I just divide the negative and so I have this fraction, it's okay. But the cool part is that the solutions to this, they are all in terms of sine. Sine of 10 degrees, sine of 50 degrees, and sine of negative 70 degrees. So this is really cool, isn't it? And now, I do have a small question for you guys, right here. Based on this right here, can we figure out what if I multiply sine of 10 degrees by sine of 50 degrees, and then multiply by sine of negative 70 degrees? If I just multiply these three values, once again, I don't know the exact value for some of 10 degrees yet. I don't know the exact value for some 50 degrees. And of course, I also don't know the sine value of negative 70 degrees. But what if I multiply these three together? Based on this right here, can we figure out the answer to this real quick? And the answer to that is yes, we can. And this is the really interesting part that a lot of times that you see, um, this is actually like the part two of the sum of 10 degrees video, right? And we can say a few more things about this. And 
if you go check out Brand Work, they have a lot of these kind of things that you guys can you know study, and this is really interesting. That's how we learn math, right? Okay, to continue this, I will tell you guys the answer. The solution to this is that this right here is just going to be the negative constant term. This right here was positive eight. So the answer to this is just negative of that. The answer is just negative one over eight. Okay. Um, at, the, at this moment, you may want to pause the video and see how we can make the connection from here to here. So we end up with this. But I'm going to leave that to you guys, and then you guys can leave a comment down below to show us your approach. But I also thank Brilliant.Work for sponsoring this video. And please check out the website and use the link Brilliant.Work slash Black Pen Red Pen. This is how you guys can support my channel. And if you guys would like to sign up for their annual premium subscription, if you use that link, you can get 20% off discount if you're one of the first 200 people to subscribe. And once you subscribe, you will be able to get a limited access to their courses, which include calculus, complex analysis, abstract algebra, number series, and a lot more. You guys should definitely check them out. And before you guys go, be sure to take a look of their problems of the week page and start to work with their questions. You guys will find that yourself so spend a lot of time to solve their questions because their questions are so interesting. And you see the connection in math, they're just so beautiful, right? The sign values, which you don't know the exact value of this right here, but in fact, when you multiply them, you get a really nice answer. And I still don't know the exact value of sign of 10 degrees, which I'm going to show you guys sometime soon in the future. I promise. And anyway, hopefully you guys like this video, and if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. Math is my favorite subject, and I like to make videos to share the joy of doing math for you guys. And as always, that's it.